last year's speeches at the Committee of 24 were pretty much what we'd come to expect from this session of the UN. Spain described Gibraltar as a colonial anachronism, occupied, artificially populated and illegally expanded. And Gibraltar told the committee, 50 years on from the 1967 referendum, that that should have been where the Gibraltar question ended. But about a week and a half after the historic ousting of the government of Mr. Rajoy, Mr. Margallo and Mr. Dastis, the question this time was, could we expect something different from Spain? For Gibraltar's part, the Chief Minister's speech reflected the changing times while reaffirming the basics. Fabian Picardo said under this Pepe government, Gibraltar had experienced some of the worst economic sanctions and restrictions since the opening of the frontier in 1982, a campaign of opprobrium designed to break down the commercial and human cross-border relationships. But he expressed the hope this would change under the new PSOE government, while addressing the also new chairman of the committee, Ambassador Walton Alfonso Webson of Antigua and Barbuda. We also once again renew our call for the committee to visit Gibraltar to see for yourselves the real circumstances of our modern reality. But most importantly, Mr. Chairman, we call for an opportunity to see cooperation between Gibraltar and its neighboring region grow. That has been facilitated but not delivered by the lowering of the anti-Gibraltar rhetoric since Senor Dastis took over as foreign minister in Spain from Senor Margallo. We sincerely trust that the political change in Madrid now may allow the space for such further cooperation to flourish. Mr. Picardo described Gibraltar as an economic engine of legitimate activity for the region, in contrast to the illicit drug trafficking, which he said was linked to the Pepe government's lack of investment in the campo. He said Gibraltar is ready to work on solutions for the consequences of Brexit, in particular the right of free movement for all citizens. And he restated its support for the Trilateral Forum, highlighting Gibraltar's commitment to deliver on its Cordoba Agreement obligations, particularly in relation to the airport. Yet the Spanish government has singularly failed to comply with its obligations under these agreements under the Partido Popular uh, in, uh, since they were elected in 2011. We trust that this attitude of non-compliance with agreements and false calumnies about Gibraltar will now be reassessed by the government of Prime Minister Sanchez. And we are ready to conclude further agreements in areas of mutual concern and interest, including agreements to provide full and unimpeded fiscal transparency of persons and corporations, agreements for the protection of the environment and for deeper police and judicial cooperation. The ball is in Spain's court, said the chief minister. Gibraltar will not be found wanting and remains ready to work together with Spain for the mutual interest and benefit of the people. Whether or not this was down to the short time since its change of government, Spain's response saw no major changes to the statements of previous years, but had a narrow focus on the question of territorial integrity and bilateral dialogue. Francisca Pedros from Spain's UN mission again referred to Gibraltar as an anachronistic colonial situation and the only colony in Europe. The UK illegally appropriated other territories which were not ceded to it in the treaty. That treaty clearly defined the areas ceded to the United Kingdom. They were only ceded the city and the castle of Gibraltar along with its port and inland waters, defences and fortresses. She reiterated the call for bilateral dialogue between the UK and Spain, referring to the Brussels process that's highlighted in the UN's annual resolution, a resolution that also notes the UK's double lock on agreeing or negotiating a change of sovereignty for Gibraltar against the wishes of its people. Spain, as the United Nations has requested, remains open to dialogue and in that spirit of openness and dialogue, Spain submitted to the Fourth Committee on, in October 2016, a generous offer for talks on co-sovereignty. The committee is familiar with the content of that offer, and that offer remains valid. While Spain's speech restated briefly that the joint sovereignty proposal is still on the table, there was no mention of Brexit. The lever that former Spanish Foreign Minister José Manuel García Margallo first suggested might bring that proposal to fruition. With the new Spanish government and the new chairman of the committee, the message Gibraltar brought to the UN this time was largely one of hope. Hope for a more positive and cooperative relationship with Spain at a time of uncertainty for both, and hope that Gibraltar's ongoing case for its right to self-determination will not fall on deaf ears. Cristina Cortés, GBC News, New York.